when I first thought about stopping gambling, or when I first really decided that I needed to address my gambling problem, the thing I couldn't get my head around was how my life would be without gambling in it. I had made gambling such an intrinsic part of my life, um, be that my social life where I was seeing other gambling friends, we were watching the football together or watching Jeff and the boys on a Saturday afternoon with all our bets down, um, whether it was going to the pub with some friends and playing some fruit machines or going to the casino or anything like that. Gambling had become such an intrinsic part of my life that I couldn't imagine going the rest of my life without it. Certainly I thought, well, I could give this up for a week or possibly even a month or so. But the idea that I would never be able to gamble again and, and these you know, perceived good times that I'm having with my, my friends would be no more. I thought, well, my life's going to be going to be boring. I'm going to be excluded and my life is going to be going to be quite dull. Now, to address this, we need to sort of look at um, something. Um, and that is dopamine. Now, dopamine is something that's talked about all the bloody time um, when it comes to gambling. And if you watch a lot of videos here on YouTube about gambling, you would have heard people bang on about dopamine all the time. However, it's incredibly important to understand the um, role of dopamine in maintaining a gambling addiction. Now, the common misconception with dopamine is that it's a it's a feel-good drug. People think it's the drug that's released when you gamble or when you drink or do other things. People think that when you gamble, dopamine is released, which makes you feel good, which is why you want to gamble. But that actually isn't the case. Dopamine is instead the driving factor that causes you to gamble. Now, just to give you a scenario, and, and you might be able to relate to this in the, the same way. When I used to play on fob tees, for example, at the bookmakers, now there's bookmakers about a 10 minute walk away from, from my house, right, which I'm now self excluded from, but I had made a, a conscious decision to walk to the bookmakers and, you know, play the fob tees. And once I'd made that decision that I was going to gamble, a little bit of dopamine will be released. And the closer and closer you get to the point at which you are able to gamble, where you're able to fulfill that, that urge and that addiction, the amount of dopamine increases. And you might find, like me, that the closer you get to it, you almost end up in a, a sort of semi-frenzied state because of the sheer amounts of dopamine that's being pumped into your brain. I used to sometimes even jog the last, you know, half a mile or whatever towards the bookies because I wanted to get that a bit, bit sooner. Um, as you can probably tell by looking at me, I'm not much of a, a jogger, but my brain at this point was being so overwhelmed with this anticipation, with the suspense, you know, and, and the, the waiting of, of this outcome, which was the gambling, that my brain had become flooded with dopamine and I was I was driven, I was going, and I was going to get to that bookies as soon as possible so I could start start gambling. Now, the gambling itself, actually, inherently, is a bit of an anticlimax because by then you, your your the brief in your brain has been fulfilled the the dopamine was driving you to do it in the same way that dopamine drives you to to do things which your your brain believes will have a reward at the end and you know sometimes that reward comes sometimes it doesn't with gambling it's the same in many ways as other you know um potentially unhealthy um but semi addictive habits and behaviors for example if you order a takeaway or to say you order a, a Domino's pizza or something on a, a Friday night you know the suspense when you've ordered that food looking forward to, to the pizza arriving looking forward to you know the delivery and, and what have you is sometimes so much stronger than the actual enjoyment of the, the food at the end of it and the same can be said for gambling and when you're quitting gambling you can get overwhelmed by the sense that you know you're going to really miss the fun times you have gambling you're going to miss that that sort of um, social side you're going to miss those those great times and in your brain you'll have memories of times where you really enjoyed gambling now these fall into two categories the first one which is what i just explained is the fact that you're not actually going to miss your your brain isn't craving the actual gambling your brain is craving the the dopamine that is you know produced through the promise and the the sort of the impending um gambling you know when you think about it, realistically, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot today before making this video, is the amount of times that I actually enjoyed the act of gambling. If you watch my um, That Feeling video, which is kind of just like a little, um, sort of, not a sketch, but like a little dramatisation of, of that feeling, the suspense building up to actually the, you know, the playing, that's the, that's the addictive part, that's the driving part, that's the bit you need to get rid of. You know, once you're actually gambling, it's like it's the same as playing fruit machines in pubs, isn't it? You know, you go out with your your mates on a night out, and you might think, "Oh, I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna have a go." And, and you've got your your money in your hand, and you're, you're playing the fruit machine. And actually, you're you're a couple of minutes in, 
and you know you're a bit nonplussed by the whole experience you know you actually hear your mates over at the the table um you know having a bit of a laugh and a joke and a bit of banter or whatever and you're thinking actually you know what i'd, I'd rather be there i'd rather be doing that you're not getting pleasure from the gambling you know and and what's driven you to to you know driven you to, to that point is is this this you know this um this dopamine release through through you know not knowing what what you're going to what's going to happen um and the other time as well, there are times where you actually generally are gambling and having a good time. But the honest, honest thing is, is that you probably would have been having a good time if you weren't gambling. The, the times I've got in my head that I think, oh, you know, I used to love those days, were days when I used to go away playing fruit machines with, with friends. We used to go, you know, around the country. We used to go, you know, trips to holiday camps and stuff like that. And we used to have a, a good laugh. And, you know, I, met, oh, I miss those days, you know. And yes, there was a, an element that some of it was being paid for by the gambling. But actually... If I'd gone away with my mates and we just had a drink and a, a laugh, I would have enjoyed that probably just as much. But my brain remembers that as part of my my gambling life, and it, it, it you know it considers that by removing gambling, you know, um, I, I wouldn't have had that, that entertainment. In the same way, I think as some people say, you know, that they don't want to quit alcohol because they can't see themselves in enjoying social situations without alcohol. And aside, obviously, from the chemical addiction in that respect, you're, what you're remembering, the good times you're remembering, you know, when you were drinking, were probably not because you were drunk, but they were because you were around people that you liked and actually you were enjoying their company and, and generally having a good time anyway. There just happened to be alcohol involved and you, you kind of attributed one to the other. In fact, sometimes, going back to my bookie's example, with alcohol, it can be exactly the same thing. The thought of going and having a few beers after work on a Friday you know, the thought of it is the driving factor. You actually get excitement from going out and having that first pint, which you'll probably enjoy. But a lot of that excitement is up there in your head. And it's the suspense, it's the it's the driving feature. And, and without being boring and scientific about this, this is, was the, the driving factor um, back when we were cavemen to go out hunting. You know, there's no fun in, in you know, hunting. And there's no fun in, um, you know, eating a, a, a deer or whatever it is you just killed. But the dopamine is there to drive you to go and kill that deer so you can eat. You know, in the same way as us sort of fat, lazy people, now you order a takeaway. You know, the, it's the dopamine, it's the, the excitement, the looking forward to, to ordering and looking forward to the food arriving. That's far more of a sensation than actually eating it, which, you know. And that's why, like, fast food adverts, same as gambling adverts, you know, are, are so important because they, they trigger that response and that, that desire, obviously, unlike the cavemen who, you know, dopamine inspired to go and kill a deer, you know, they needed to do that because they needed to survive. We don't. We don't need to go and gamble. But our brain is perceiving some form of reward at the end of this, which is what's driving us to do it. So going back to my, my theory that um, life will be boring without gambling, um, I hate to break it to you. Um, and uh, this is going to sound a bit negative, but yes, it probably will be. Um, but bear in mind that life is actually pretty mundane anyway. What gambling does, through this release of dopamine, uh, a word that I've used far too much in the last seven or eight minutes, what gambling does is it promises you something. It promises you a reward if you go and act out this behaviour, i.e. gambling. But the reward never comes. Uh, regardless of win or lose, I mean, how many times have you, you know, got excited about gambling, you know, had, a, had a decent win? I mean, I know it's, it's much more common to lose, but you've had a decent win and you've actually ended up feeling kind of empty you know because none of that mattered you weren't you weren't enjoying the gambling think about it think when the last time you were playing online slots for example think of the last time you actually really kind of enjoyed it you don't you go through the motions and and you know you're getting to to sort of the goal which is either some sort of cash out but most likely you know uh, a loss and and you know ultimately remorse but you're not enjoying the gambling the gambling is 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 not the bit that you're addicted to it's the promise of gambling it's the suspense it's the not knowing this is why right another one last example and then i'll let you crack on with your day um this is why when the the, the 500 pound fruit machines uh started appearing in arcades and stuff years and years ago and the first one i remember ever playing was I think was probably rainbow rich it's probably the same as a lot of people and back then you know, you span the reels, and if you if it landed a feature, it just went dunk 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 symbols. I don't even think the feature symbols used to make a noise. Um, and you go, oh look, I've got the, you know, I've got the feature, whatever. Gambling companies soon realized soon realized that the, the the addiction and the addictive element of these games was built on this suspense, the same way as you get when you think you're going to gamble, which is why 
they made the symbol the scatter symbols make noises when they landed because then your brain goes you know it, it triggers your that response in your brain to the not knowing the, the suspense the anticipation that's when they started bringing in feature teasers so you land two scatters and then the rest of the reels spin really slowly you know they did that because that prolongs the anticipation it prolongs that time of not knowing which releases more and more dopamine which means that you become like effectively more and more addicted to the games and then think when when occasionally sometimes you're playing a game and a feature does land after a long tease and actually getting a bonus or, or getting a win or whatever feels like an anti-climax and the reason is is you're not addicted to winning you're not addicted to trying to win most gambling addicts don't care underneath it or whether they win or lose what you're addicted to do is that feeling of suspense that feeling of you know potential reward that might be coming your way you know at the end of the fact so what can we do well ultimately and uh, this is something i've been doing a bit of reading on so i might make a, a sort of follow-up video is we need to reprogram our brains to you know reset uh, effectively the, the the dopamine triggers because the problem is is that like fast food like alcohol like i'd say recreational drugs but they're again i mean they obviously have their own chemical effects um the the super high you know um excitement dopamine releasing activities you know do tend to dwarf everything else which means you're not then getting pleasures in sort of normal things which you might enjoy so reading going for a walk doing these incredibly healthy and, and noble things but for example during lockdown i was enjoying going out for walks because what else was there to do you know i couldn't go to the pub and have a few pints i couldn't do xyz whatever fill whatever you know normal ways i i sort of scratch a, an emotional itch um and yeah I, I was getting more pleasure for them because i'd reset those senses i couldn't go and get those quick hit quick satisfaction you know things and i was just finding more enjoyment more satisfaction in in simpler things and you'll find that does come back to you to a, a large extent once you've been clear of gambling for a while and you will start finding more pleasure in in normal things but life is possibly still going to be boring you still have to get up in the morning you still have to you know go to work you still have to put dinner on the table you still have to go through that routine and most of your evenings are going to be full of you know sitting down and watching netflix or or doing whatever you know but that is life and the thing gambling does is it offers you that sort of promise that instant escape from boredom but you're not enjoying it i almost assure you that you're not enjoying it please do have a, have a think about the last time you think you actually enjoyed the act of gambling not the, the social bit around it or you know the memories that you might have attached to gambling but aren't gambling related think about the last time you actually enjoyed sitting down and the act of of actually gambling you know i can't uh, you know in the last sort of year of, of my gambling i can't i can't even think of a time i actually enjoyed playing online slots or playing a fob tea i was going through the motions but my brain was insisting there might be a reward at the end of it which is what's driving me to do it um, I've rambled on, uh, but uh, yeah, I hope that was that was sort of interesting. It, it's definitely worth doing a bit more sort of reading on on sort of resetting dopamine levels and things like that. Um, I'll, I might make a follow up video. And um, one thing I'll, I'll say um, is uh, no, you know what? I'll save that to another video. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon. All the best.